Power tools, if you think about it, kind of define who we are and what we are as woodworkers or tradespeople, carpenters, electricians, plumbers, bricklayers, the list goes on and on. And a lot of times, some people will watch your content or not watch your content based on what power tool you're using or what brand it is. Sometimes your family might not even, okay, it's not really that serious. So, yeah, without too much talking, let's get into this video. In my shop, I have 28 different Metabo HPT power tools. Uh, I have a couple other brands floating around here as well. I have German Metabo Bosch. Uh, there's a DeWalt tool in there, and there's still a couple lingering Harbor Freight tools. But I, I figured I would cover them. Two of them are duplicates, so there's really 26 different tools. I figure, you know, I cover the different ones that I use, go into a short explanation of what I use them for, um, and maybe a little bit of interesting history behind the tool, like uh, some of the ones I have have some interesting backstory as to why they're here. So we'll start off with this big boy. Uh, this is my Finnish miter saw. Um, if one of the last steps in a prog project is to cross cut a board, I'm usually using this. It's got a Freud Thin Kerf 96 tooth uh, ultimate cross cut blade on it. It's had the same blade on it for about two years and it's just about as sharp as the day I put it on. Um, the model number on this is C12 RSHS, I believe. Yeah. The uh, S is in parentheses, and that just means it's got a laser marker on it. So This is kind of a shop queen. It pretty much stays here. If I'm going to take a miter saw to the job site, it'll be the next tool I'm about to show you. This bad boy is the C12 FDBH. This is what I like to call my breakdown saw. When I first get lumber into the shop, a lot of times you end up with... Uh, ends that are, um, there's still the ends that were cut with a chainsaw when the log was about to be taken onto the mill or sometimes on the mill. So in order to make those edges square, so when I measure things I know how much lumber I'm actually working with, a lot of times those boards will get taken to this saw. This saw is currently running a Diablo 44 tooth general purpose blade. It's also a thin curved miter saw blade. Uh, and if I ever need to take a miter saw somewhere for whatever reason. Um, I don't do a lot of on-site work, but when I do and I have to use a miter saw, this is the one I bring. Because this one weighs about 60 pounds, the other one weighs almost 100. Yeah, this is my breakdown saw. Both of these miter saws are 12 inch blades. This is a non-sliding dual bevel miter saw, the other one is a sliding bevel saw. This big saw is uh, one you guys have seen pretty frequently if you've been watching my videos for any length of time. I've had this for, oh, quite a while. This was one of the tools as well as the first saw I showed you guys that was actually used in what is now my paint room, but that was my original woodworking shop. Um, this is C10 RJS. Yep, this is a 10 inch corded job site, 15 amp. Uh, table saw. This is pretty much the heart of my entire operation. Every single project, pretty much without fail, starts with this saw. And uh, it's been a warhorse. It's been dead reliable. I have not had a single issue with it. Um, and it's got a lot of miles on it. This saw has seen Easily 20, 25,000 board foot of hardwood lumber. Um, there's probably some softwood mixed in there as well with that number. But it's taken it like a champ. Um, it's been used so much. There's battle scars on the, uh, on the top here. Just from boards going across it, the edges here are smooth instead of lightly textured like they are in the middle of the saw. The kerf plate is polished now. <laughs> The end of this used to be black, but yeah, it's incredibly accurate. 
it's respectably powerful. You know, it's not a full cabinet saw, but um, one of the things, it, a new table saw is not very high up on my list of priorities right now because this thing is just so reliable. Uh, this, I'm covering a lot of things in this video that aren't necessarily categorically called power tools. A lot of them are stationary equipment. Making this video because maybe some of you out there, you have a workshop and uh, you'll see something here. It's like, oh yeah, I could use one of those. And it'll give you ideas. So, some of you might know I do not have the greatest opinion of uh, Grizzly slash Shotfox slash South Bend. Regardless, I have four of their tools, and this is one of them. This is the W1855. This is a combination sander. Up top here, we have a 4x36 inch uh, Diablo. I, this feels like a 120 um, belt. And down here, we have a 6 inch disc that's uh, PSA, which is pressure sensitive adhesive. This is for sanding things on the corner. Usually, I round corners with the disc. I will shape stakes, like garden stakes, things like that. And up here, um, I use this for various different things. Like if I have to quickly sand a very small piece, I can do it safely here without worrying about it going flying off because I'm trying to use a random orbit sander. Uh, this thing has been pretty decent. The only thing I don't really like about it is this table isn't super flat, so if you wanted to true up a miter or something, I wouldn't even bother trying to use this. But it does work for rounding corners and general purpose things like that. This next guy, this is the W1870. It's also a Shop Fox. Uh, not one of my most used tools in the shop, but it does come in handy because this thing can do quite a number of things that a lot of other tools can't do. This is a scroll saw. It's an 18 inch variable speed. Uh, you can also hook up a flex shaft to the motor and use it kind of like a Dremel. What this gets used for is um, miniature sign making or if I need to make a really high detail cut that's curved in something or if I'm working with something really small. This is usually what does it, but like I said, not exactly the most uh, used tool in the shop. It's also quite, quite uh, high maintenance. And uh, that's not specific to this model. Most scroll saws are kind of a high maintenance tool. The blades only last about 20 to 30 minutes. And you have to oil this thing with engine oil so the bearings don't give out on you. But this thing has also been relatively decent for me despite it being a shop box. Um, it was because these two tools worked so well for me that was the whole reason I got a Shop Fox planer molder and a dust collector. So let's go over to those. Okay, so this thing is the subject of many a woodworking nightmare. This is the Shop Fox W1812. This is a 7 inch planer molder. Um, like it says, it can plane anything up to 7 inches wide and well, about 8 inches thick, although I don't know why on earth you would be planing something that thick, but the capability is there if you need it. The other thing it's good for is making architectural millwork. So here we have a piece of 351. This is two and a half inch casing. This goes around doors and windows and things like that. So there is a, Lord knows if my camera is ever gonna focus on something like this, but you can make various things with the planer molder. You can make um, baseboard, casing, quarter rounds, um, some small wainscoting panels, chair rail, estragial, picture frame molding, you can even make doors, you can make cabinet doors with it. Um, there's lots of uses for a planer molder. And uh, for the money, this pretty much was my best option at the time, though I really wish I had held out for a Woodmaster 725. Which, now, with the package arranged the way that I would want it, that's about a $9,000 machine. Back when I bought this, the market value was $1,650. I had to pay $2,100 because of freight shipping. Now Grizzly is trying to sell this for $2,450. Inflation, friends. It really makes the uh, big equipment tough. 
to buy. You guys are way back there because this thing's so darn tall. This is the W1685 uh, 1.5 horse 16 amp single phase dust collector. It's supposed to get about 1280 CFM. As we all know, power tool company manufacturers are liars when it comes to CFM. Um, but it is substantial enough for this machine 99% of the time. Um, really wish I had held out for something that had a canister down here. If you have the option of waiting, get a dust collector with a canister. Your lungs will thank you and you won't have to clean up so much dust. But this thing has been pretty rock solid actually. Again, despite it being a shop box. Uh, this gets used on the player molder, it gets used on the table saw, the combination sander that I showed you guys. Uh, da, 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 da. I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. So, there's one more stationary tool that I have to show you, and then we're on to actual power tools. This little guy on the floor, this is the EC914S, it's the Metabol HPT, the tank. It's a six gallon. Uh, pancake compressor is what they like to call it. Uh, it's oil free. The max tank pressure is 200 psi, 4 CFM and 90 psi. You can read the stats on the front. This thing, I have two of them. I have had three. I've only burnt one up, um, and that was uh, doing HVLP with wrong settings, and this thing was pretty much running constantly. Do the math. But as long as your gun is dialed in, you can run HVLP off of this thing, which you really can't say for any other oil-free pancake compressor. Um, it's got just about enough power to do it and do it all day. In fact, I have done it all day several times with these compressors. This one is the prettier one. Uh, this thing stays here at the shop. The other one, which has taken a tumble along with myself in a customer's parking lot, much to my shame, uh, that one is at Fluffs. But what I use this for, uh, like I said, HVLP, I'll use it to dust things out. I'll blow out tools after a long, hard session with it. Uh, pneumatic nailers, staplers, um, anything you would really use an air compressor for, this thing gets used for. Uh, another big cornerstone of the shop. Okay, we're on to handheld tools. This was the first cordless Metabo HBT product I ever purchased for myself and for the long time it was my only cordless tool. They do not make this one anymore. I kind of wish I had gotten the black drill to go with it way back when, but um, I got this thing as kit form for I believe 99 bucks at Lowe's. It came with one, one and a half amp hour battery as well as one of the slow 18 volt chargers. Uh, I I think it came with the bag, question mark? I think. I can't be sure about that. But this is probably the Metabo HPT tool I've had for the third longest time. Um, it's been rock solid, never broken on me, never hiccuped or anything. It's got plenty of power, and it's got the battle scars to prove it. <laughs> um, Lots of pocket holes, lots of structural screws driven with this thing. Lots of holes cut out with spaddle bits. Um, lots of RSS's, R4's, fin trim screws, you name it, man. If, if the screw or the task is out there, I've done it. I've even drilled the pocket holes with this thing. Um, it's kind of a shame that they don't make it anymore, but it is what it is. Mine still works, so... I don't see that changing anytime soon. Alright, second impact. This is a new one. I'm not even sure that it's out in its current form on the market yet. The previous version is. This is the WH18DEX. Um, the previous version that's on the market currently was pretty much this exact impact driver with this battery. And that's what it looked like. Pro tip. If you ever want to know if a Metabo HPT tool is about to come out or be replaced, look at what's on clearance in the stores. Um, or you can look at the Hikoki website, which is Metabo HPT everywhere else in the world. So Australia, Japan, New Zealand, England, that's where I deal. 
this gets used for pretty much the same thing that the other impact does, you know, woodworking screws, pocket hole screws, uh, structural construction screws, RSS's, fin trim, the lot. And it's not an impact, but it did come with that one. This is the DS18DEX. This is a half inch 18 volt cordless drill. Uh, brushless with the React uh, reactive force control, so if your drill bit or whatever binds up, the motor will stop so it don't rip your hand off. Really underrated feature. Um, this thing gets used for drilling holes. I also occasionally use it for driving screws and things like that. Um, kind of a nostalgic thing for me, one of the first big things Fluff and I did together as far as um, carpentry slash woodworking was building out the uh, chicken run to what it is now. And I had, back then, <laughs> this thing is hilarious. It's a little warrior 18 volt drill from Harbor Freight. I'm pretty sure this was 20 bucks back then. And uh, it smokes now, so. God, I, <laughs> I can't bring myself to throw it away because that's what I started with, but it, it, it's a heap and pile of junk. This thing is awesome though. It comes with a uh, vice, uh, no, a Vita chuck. And it's got a clutch. There's also a hammer drill version of this out, but I got the regular one. This came in a kit with, this came in a kit with uh, this, two of these two amp hour batteries, one of the uh, slow 18 volt chargers, and a bag and a Phillips bit. So we have one more impact to go. I have wanted to do this video for a long time and the reason I couldn't is because I couldn't talk about all of my Metabo HPT tools. I've had this since probably early October and uh, like I explained in its introduction video for the longest time we didn't know when we were going to be able to talk about it uh, because of some supply issues that had happened with this particular tool. So. This is another impact, and that's where the other battery should go. I wonder why I had an extra one of these laying around. Uh, this is the WH18DC. This is the 18 volt version of Metabo HPT's triple hammer bolt. Got five different modes a triple light, belt hook, um, nice, nice hard case, and it came with an 18 volt quick charger, a fan cooled charger. And yeah. So all of these pretty much get used for similar things with the exception of the drill. Um, it does drilling stuff. So, yeah. Next tool. This bad boy is the RH18DA. It's an 18 volt cordless heat gun. Um, it's got two fan speeds, a digital display, and it reads in Fahrenheit and uh, Celsius. Uh, it's got a light. It's got multiple different uh, nozzles that you can use. It's got a little hook which can swivel out if you want it to. What this mainly gets used for, honestly, um, because I don't do big epoxy river tables, I use it for lighting incense or bending PVC pipe, um, drying things on my workbench if I've spilled water or something like that. Um, I can unfreeze pipes and plumbing and stuff like that. You can even start fires with this. I, so far I have used this thing for pretty much every task that Metabo HBT did not envision it doing. So, uh, yeah. But, in all seriousness, um, there probably will come a couple of times in the future where I have to use uh, at least tabletop epoxy and a great way to get rid of bubbles is a heat gun. Also, if I ever need to wrap any sort of outdoor power equipment or whatever in shrink wrap, this is a great tool for that as well. Admittedly, not my most used tool in the shop. But, probably one of my favorite to use, honestly. This was actually my very first Metabo HPT tool. This is the C7UR. They make a version of this with the brake, but for some reason I got the one without the brake. Oh well. 
Uh, this is a seven and a quarter inch circular saw. It's a 15 amp corded one with the fastest seven and a quarter inch no load speed of any saw, uh, 6800 RPM. And this gets used primarily for ripping, um, straight line ripping boards. Um, I've used it for cutting two by fours down to length at the trailer. Um, it's a circular saw. You use it for circular saw things. Does not get used as much as I would like it to anymore. And that's mainly because I'm only me here right now. Um, when somebody else gets into the shop, uh, whenever I find, find my uh, first employee, this thing's probably going to see some use again. So, yeah. But, like I said, first Metabo HPT tool ever. This is what started it all. And it has been rock solid. This bad boy is the C3607 DWA. This has been in so many reels and shorts, I know it's not a number by heart. Um, it's a 36 volt cordless, seven and a quarter inch circular saw. This is part of Metabo HPT's multi-volt platform, which is a 36 volt platform. Well, it's actually a dual voltage platform, but um, brushless, it's a rear handle saw. It's nice and light for a cordless saw. It's got magnesium shoe and um, housing. It's got a rafter hook. Um, it's awesome. Uh, I don't, really don't have enough good things to say about this tool. I wish it was a little bit lighter, honestly, but in order for Metabo HP tool, HPT to make this tool any lighter than it already is, they would have to cut corners, and I'm glad they didn't. So, yeah, it's been rock solid. I haven't had a single problem with it. And this saw gets used for a lot of the same things that this saw used to. So, yeah. This is the CR18DB. This is a brushed 18 volt cordless reset. A lot of miles on this one, um, especially lately. Not a whole lot of woodworking uses, but I do live on a property that has 12 acres and a lot of it is um, forested. We have trees. A lot of them are old ash trees. Uh, so occasionally Actually, quite frequently, this bad boy gets used in place of a chainsaw because I just I don't have one. That's why this big long 12 inch Diablo pruning blade is on there. It gets the job done, believe it or not. Uh, it's got regular and orbital mode. It's supposed to have an Allen key down here for uh, moving the shoe in and out, but mine fell off, so it just gets kept in the toolbox now. But other than the Allen key coming out, not a single problem with it. Rock solid, dependable reset. And for a brush tool, it gets a pretty long life out of the batteries. It's a good one. This is an oscillating tool. That could be a fun little bit. <laughs> uh, this is the uh, CV18DBL. This is a cordless oscillating multi-tool. Um, some of you might not know what this is for, a lot of you probably do, but for those who don't, this spindle you can attach a blade to and the blade will rock back and forth. Um, probably one of the most underrated tools you can have in a workshop because this can get you out of a lot of situations that a lot of other tools really can't or can't do safely or efficiently. Uh, it's not particularly fast for any one task, but it can do a whole lot of tasks. You can sand with this thing, you can cut with this thing, you can take tile grout out, um, you can cut metal, you can do a whole lot of stuff uh, with an oscillating tool. This thing has saved my butt more times than I would like to admit. Um, honestly, I don't remember if this was 99 or 199. It was one of the two. Um, I got it bare tool only. Uh, I've had this for a while. I think I got this back when I did the Elmore project. And, yeah. It's a real lifesaver. If you don't have one of these, 
for the price point, you don't even have to get a Metabo HPT. You can get a cheap whatever. Um, I would get a cordless one, but you really have no excuse to not have an oscillating tool of some kind in your shop. They are just, they're that handy. So. Alright, I guess we're doing sanders now. That's what I'm up to in the, uh, the tool shelves. Uh, this is the SB3608DA. This is a 36 volt belt sander. And, uh, oh, where to start with this thing? It's a 3x21. It's currently got a Diablo 36 grid on there. Um, can use either 2.5 amp hour or 4 amp hour batteries. Uh, this is a 4. What these get used for, I have two belt sanders. Um, these get used for uh, flattening large panel glue ups. So when you have a bead of glue, after you've glued a bunch of boards together on edge, this is typically what I do to level those down and even out the ridges. Uh, I also use it to clean off my workbenches periodically. You can sand floors with this thing. You can uh, do some limited uh, jointing with this thing, making stuff flat. Uh, you can sand large tabletops with it. You can do all sorts of things with the belt sander. Uh, this is a massive time saver. Um, a lot of times when I start sanding, even if it's not a big panel glue up, I'll start with this thing because I can go all the way up to 120 and then I can switch to uh, 150 with my random orbit sander and only have to do two grits with that because random orbit sanders are pretty slow. So, yeah, SB3608DA. Now this is the SB8V2. This, I believe, is an older Hitachi design back when they were going by Hitachi Power Tools, but it's still pretty awesome. This was the first belt sander I ever got. Uh, I believe this was also the MR project. Um, it gets used for the same thing that this one does. It's just this one is corded. And the power is pretty similar between the two, actually. You would think this being cordless is it's slower than this, and it really isn't. Um, yeah, no real complaints about this other than it gets a little warm sometimes, but it's a belt sander, so. Now, this is the SV1813DA. This is a cordless 18 volt 5 inch random orbit sander. Um, I'm not entirely sure that I need to explain what a random orbit sander is or what it's good for, but I use it for things that you know, you would use a random orbit sander for sanding large panels, sanding small stuff, sanding edges, sanding floors, whatever. Um, awesome little package, and I don't have to bring extension cords with me if I ever have to use this on a customer job. All right, here is the SV13YST. This is another five inch random orbit sander. Uh, this is a corded one. It's a 2.8 amp. Uh, this is my most powerful random orbit sander that I have. And there are quite a few hours on this sander and it still keeps going. Pretty darn reliable. And last but certainly not least, this is the SV12SG. This is a four and a half inch quarter sheet um, orbital sander. Um, it's a sheet sander. It's got dust collection that actually does work pretty well. Uh, sheet sanders can do a lot of the same things that these random orbit sanders can do, just maybe a little bit less efficiently. And uh, if you know what you're doing, you can get just as good a finish quality out of one of these as you can one of these. But this sander can do things that these two can't. Uh, you can sand into interior corners on pieces of furniture with this. You can sand on edge without rounding over the edge. Uh, you can uh, safely sand smaller things without worrying about the workpiece flying off. And it's just a good little sander. This uh, quarter sheet gets used pretty frequently. I know a lot of people, um, they look at these and they think they're jokes. They're homeowner tools or whatever. 
Um, I don't think that at all about this thing. Uh, it's a little workhorse. It's pretty darn fast too for a quarter sheet sander. This thing is just about as fast as this uh, cordless ROS is. And yeah, the one of the big advantages of quarter sheet sanders is uh, sheet sandpaper is pretty cheap. This can use uh, regular sheets or it can use the uh, stick fest uh, PSA sheets as well. And they also make a five inch round pad that I just saw in the manual the other day. And they make a uh, quarter sheet Velcro hook and loop pad for this thing as well. So I might have to get my hands on one of the five inch round pads. It's a pretty interesting uh, idea for one of these. All right, this is kind of an outlier um, as far as the tools go, but I will get um, more of the same type. This is the UB18DB. This is a 2000 lumen work light. Um, and this gets used uh, when I'm sanding panels or trim or whatever. I will set it opposite of me. And what that lets me do is it allows me to see defects in the surface of the workpiece or to see if I'm leaving pigtails while sanding, which never really happens, but if one did happen, I would be able to see it. Um, you can check on the flatness and smoothness of your finish. You can use it as a videography light, which is mainly what I use it for. You can use it for a whole bunch of things. It's a big light. Metabo HPT also makes a 4,000 and a 10,000 lumen version of this. The two above this also have USB charging capability. Uh, but this is a nice little starter light. It is enough to light up an entire room if you need it to. Uh, it's not necessarily the brightest light in the world for that, but it'll get the job done. And you can hang it off of things. It also has a 5 inch thread for your uh, uh, laser level tripods and stuff like that, so you can set it on its own tripod. Uh, this is an 18 volt tool. One of the big 4 slash 8 amp hour multivolt batteries will run this for about 8 hours or a full work day. So, that's pretty nice. Alright, now we are on to routers. Uh, this is the Metabo HPT M12VC. This is a 2 and a quarter horse uh, fixed base router. It's corded, it's brushed. Um, this gets used for things like um, the really super heavy duty tasks that I just flat out do not have enough batteries for to use the other router with, like flooring. Uh, I make hardwood floors with routers. I wish I had a Wobemaster 725, but I just don't. Um, uh, if I have to do a major metric, you know what ton of backouts for molding, um, I can use this if I get the fence for it. Uh, yeah. This is definitely a older Hitachi design. The M12 has been around forever. But it's pretty rock solid. The base is a little weird to get used to, but it does work. This is the M3612DA. This is Metabo HPT's um, full size cordless plunge router. This is a full size, full power router. It's a two horse plunge router. And uh, it's 36 volt. It's part of the multi-volt platform. It's got a turret on it. It comes with the fence. It comes with the bag. It comes with the battery. This was the kit version. It came with the uh, two and a half amp hour, which is on the heat gun. Um, these two routers use the same exact collet. Uh, they both come with a half inch and a quarter inch collet. Uh, as far as uh, routing work that gets done in the shop, this does the vast majority of it, unless I'm working on furniture, in which case the next tool I'm about to show you will do the vast majority of the routing. Fun little fact, this was the first tool I ever got out of the Metabo HPT sample review program, uh, which I'm pretty sure was about two years ago. And it has kicked some major ass since then. This tool is just... I'm talking 
thousands and thousands of feet of casing, backouts, back relief cuts. This is done 500 square foot of flooring, hardwood flooring. That was white oak. That was not an easy job, but it got it done. Uh, what's some other ridiculous stuff I've done with this thing? Uh, we did, I think it was 52 complete, those uh, eye trusses we made for the trailer. Half inch by half inch dado and pine. I had to do 104 of those to make 52 eye trusses. And this thing handled it like a champ. Solid beast workhorse of a router. It is pretty dang hard on the multivolt batteries though. It can get them very warm if you're not careful. So if you're going to do a lot of stuff, either have a lot of batteries or you can get Metabo HBT's AC adapter that will work on any of the 36 volt tools. And that will let you run all day uh, with this thing. Uh, I've never gotten the motor warm on this thing. It's very efficient, uh, it keeps itself cool, and it is tough as nails. Uh, this little guy is an 18 volt cordless trim router. Uh, comes with quarter inch and three eighths inch collets, although I never have found a use for the three eighths inch collet. Maybe I'll find a use for a three eighths bit, but that's not a very common thing for what I do. Uh, this does all of the edge profile rounding. Most of the samples that I did for uh, molding were actually done with this router with various router bits. And there's 70 samples of different profiles that this thing has done. Um, and it did most of them. It also comes with uh, a standard straight fence. It comes with a laminate trimmer fence. It comes with uh, this one and this one come with... Uh, dust collection adapter, so you can use that. It's brushless, it's 18 volt. Um, it runs forever on one of the big multi-volt batteries. It's an awesome little router. It's a workhorse. And finally for the routers, I this isn't sold as a router, but that's technically what it is. This is the M18 DYA. This is an 18 volt brushless drywall cutout tool. Um, you can stick a end mill on the end of this and cut out holes for outlets, uh, cut out holes for lighting fixtures, things like that. And you can also cut things like acrylic and polycarbonate with this thing. You can cut tile if you get the right bit. You can cut metal. Uh, there's lots of things you can use this thing for. You can also use it for the faster rated Dremel tools because this is an eighth inch chuck and collet and most Dremel accessories are eighth inch chuck and collet. As long as the uh, attachment you're using is rated for 28,000 RPM, which is what the no load speed is on this thing, you can use it. All you gotta do is take this little shoe off. This comes with an eighth inch and I believe a quarter inch collet um, for your different size roto zip bits and stuff like that. Pretty awesome little tool. I haven't gotten to use it a whole lot yet, but we're getting decently close to drywall in the trailer, so yeah. It also comes with a nice little belt clip. This is the D10 VH2. This is a 3 8 corded drill. Uh, this gets used for pretty much everything that the cordless drill does. For the longest time, this was my only drill. So, um, you can find these at pretty much any Lowe's or, uh, Meta or Metabo. Uh, Menards might have them. Uh, pretty much anywhere that sells Metabo HPT products, you can find this thing. Uh, it's just a good, solid, inexpensive corded drill. So, yeah. Okay, so this is the one lone German Metabo tool that I have. This is the SBE 650. This is a corded half inch, or is it a three eighths? No, it's a half inch. Yep, half inch. Uh, this is a corded hammer drill. Uh, this is used for, what have I used this thing for? Um, I've put 
uh, mantle anchors over a fireplace. Um, I've put that in with uh, this thing with a Bosch blue granite, I want to say, into brick. Uh, you can drill into brick, you can drill into concrete with this thing, you can drill into stone, and you can also use it for regular wood. All you do is turn the hammer drill function off. Um, and you can hear it if you push down. There's a little wavy ring on the inside of the motor of this thing that each time it hits it, it impacts the uh, whatever you're drilling into. But you can use it like a regular drill. Alrighty, down to the last two, unless I missed one, as far as Metabo goes. This is the NP50A. This is a 2 inch pro pin nailer. Um, it's not an A5 per se, but it's on the same level of quality and durability that you would expect from an A5. The A5 series is just part of the A series. It's Metabo HPT's top of the line stuff. This is an NP50A. And uh, this can take the, well, it's got 1 and 3 eighths in it now, but it can take the 2 inch pin nails. In my opinion, if I were to buy a pin nailer, I would not get a 1 and 3 eighths pin nailer. I would get something that can take 2 inch pin nails because you never know when you're going to need that extra 5 eighths. So, pretty awesome little pin nailer. I didn't even say what it's used for. Uh, light duty. Um, I started out making drop-in casing assemblies and window jam assemblies for windows for a local remodeling company of mine, or local remodeling company, it's not my company, but um, I also use this for, you can put quarter round down at the bottom of the baseboards, you can use this to make little, I don't want to say crafts, but the, that type of project. Um, anytime you want to hold something uh, while the glue sets and you don't have clamps or it's not practical to use clamps, you can use a pin nailer. This is just a very general purpose, I need it to stay there kind of tool. And pin nailers are really good for that. This is a 23 gauge pin nail, by the way. Um, Senko, I believe, makes a 21 gauge pin nail as well. Now this is an A5. This is the N3804A5. This is a quarter inch 18 gauge uh, narrow crown stapler. Uh, this thing has gotten way more use than I thought it ever would on the trailer. Uh, it can shoot up to a one and a half inch 18 gauge staple. Um, it can do bump fire. And a lot of what I use it for in the woodworking part of things um, on the back of an entertainment center where your TV sits, there's usually a backing that's made out of particle board or quarter inch plywood. Um, you can use this for that. You can use this to put drawers together in furniture. You can use this for all sorts of things. I was also using this for the casing and jam assemblies for that remodeling company. Um, and this is also excellent for making jigs. This is also pretty good for making jigs, but you can use this thing too because it's a staple and the hole is a little uglier than a pin nail. Uh, you can also use this for finished carpentry. You can put trim on walls with this. You can do pretty much whatever. You just have to use a little bit more uh, filler. But this thing is rock solid. It's dependable. Um, it's currently filthy because it just gets used all the time, always. But rock solid tool. So yeah, that is pretty much, uh, that is every single Metabo HPT and German Metabo tool I have in this shop. I also have um, some Harbor Freight stuff, it's not really worth talking too much about. I've got a biscuit joiner, I've got a corded jigsaw, um, I've got a DeWalt angle grinder, I've got a Bauer corded trim router. Uh, I've got a Bosch 2.3 horsepower modular router system that's a fixed base and a plunge base. So you can swap the motor between the two mounts. 
I'm selling that and I also have a three and a quarter inch electric hand plane that's also Bosch. It's the PL2632, which I've done a video on in the past, way back when I was in that room. Um, and that's pretty much it for power tools. Uh, I've also got a Harbor Freight shop vac, but it's a shop vac. You vacuum stuff with it. <laughs> um, the other interesting thing I have is upstairs, I have a laser engraver. I've done stuff with that in the past. And that's pretty much everything I can think of. So, if you found this video and or series of videos interesting or helpful or mildly entertaining, uh, please hit the thumbs up, like the video, maybe subscribe. There's more videos coming, like I said. Um, and uh, if you do me a favor and hit that little bell icon, you'll actually get notified when I upload a video. Uh, that's pretty much everything I can think of. Yeah. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you. Have a good one, folks. That is a lot of green. Somebody want to run the math on how much money is on this table right now? <laughs> At least a couple thousand dollars.